I'm sure you are aware that four years ago, the government of Canada eliminated the long form census. As far as I'm aware, that was the first time that Statistics Canada got a black mark. Uh, it, as far as I know, used to be the best statistical agency in the world. Uh, you're not sure anymore if it is the case. The elimination of the long form census has many, many negative consequences for all of us Canadians, and we are all poor for it. But let's find out uh, what our uh, Prime Minister has to say on the importance of data. In a speech that he recently gave at the United Nations, he said, and you can read his words, he said, vital statistics are critical. You can't manage what you can't measure. No statistician would disagree with him on that. The irony is that a prime minister who says those words also heads a government which eliminated the long form census. That truly really is ironic. Why do we need a census? What is its purpose? Well, first of all, it is a gold standard for measuring reality. Let me just give you a simple example of what I'm really trying to convey here. Assume for a moment that we would like to know how many jobs there are in Canada. A simple way to find that out quite correctly without any mistakes is to ask all Canadians who are working whether they're working or they're unemployed. You gather those numbers and you will find out how many people have jobs and how many don't. That is a reflection on the reality of how many jobs there are in Canada. There's one condition to make sure that the number we get is the right one, and that is that every person who is asked that question is obligated to answer that question. If on the other hand, the decision to respond was voluntary, many people probably would not respond to this. Even worse, there are some kinds of people who we know do not respond to these kinds of questions. And who are these kinds of people? These are people who are low income, who are unemployed, who are immigrants, who are not highly educated, and so we know that there are biases in the data that we collect on a voluntary basis. So such a survey which is voluntary will not give you correct information on the reality of a situation. So the, the replacement of the census with this survey obviously lowered the quality of the data that we need. That is one problem with a voluntary survey. There is a much bigger problem that people haven't really talked about in the last four years. And that is that the census provides an anchor for all the other surveys that take place, including the poll numbers that you see in the media done by private sector pollsters. This is because any survey which is not the kind of census I've talked about would always be biased, and you will have to make sure that you correct its information with the help of a census. What it means is that over time, as you get further and further away from the census information to adjust these other surveys, the quality of your whole statistical framework begins to decline, and a time would come that these data, all of the data, that rely on the census as a guide would become worthless. That is a much bigger problem than the loss of the information which the census provides on the variables that it tries to measure. So what is the value of a census for all of us? Let me mention a couple of things. It is, has been a tool for nation building in Canada and it is obviously quite critical for good governance. 
Let's go back to 1666. That's many, many, many years ago. Parts of Canada at that time were being run by France, and we used to call those parts in Canada at the time as New France. The government of France in 1666 realized that for this part of the world, they needed a census. So the first census in Canada took place in 1666. The government of France wanted to find out what the occupations of the various settlers were because they were trying to plan an economy for this area of the world. Let's fast forward to 1921. A census took place, and of course the census takes place every five years. A census took place in 1921, and there were 565 questions in that census. There were two areas which were critically important for the government of the time. One, what was the nature of the Canadian economy at that time? And secondly, and think back to 1921, governments had a social conscience as well, and they wanted to find out how many Canadians had a disability. We'll move on to 1941. The census at that time was critical for urban planning because the government's view was that the growth of the cities was becoming so important that they needed really good data to start planning the future of these cities. 1951, the census focused on the issue of fertility because the Canadian population at that time had begun to stagnate and that set the stage for our immigration policy. Good governance. You require accurate census information, and it doesn't matter whether you are a federal government, a provincial government, a municipal government, or you are a business, or a non-government organization, or the academia. Well, let me give you an example of the importance of the census data for the federal government itself. There are a number of laws the federal government must implement which require good information from the census. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the Employment Insurance Act, the Immigration Act, the Employment Equity Act, the Official Languages Act, and of course the Old Age Security Act. Those laws cannot be implemented properly without accurate information from the census. The census data are invaluable for the kinds of information that it provides you. It gives you information on wages, on jobs, and on incomes. It provides you information on the country's transportation needs. If you want to plan education, it has questions on education. It has questions on housing affordability and housing conditions. And there are many more things for which these data get used. Let me give you some examples. Do you know that the bus stop on your street probably was put in there because the bus company looked at the census information to find out how many people needed that bus stop? Do you know that someone who is thinking of opening a Chinese restaurant in a strip mall in your neighborhood would probably be looking at the census information to find out whether or not there's going to be demand for the stuff he's going to cook? Do you know that a couple where the husband or the wife retired and they're looking to do something in their retirement time and thought about opening a coffee shop would probably look at the census information to see whether or not their business would be a success? Do you know whether or not someone who is thinking of offering exercises, exercise classes to immigrant seniors would be looking at the census data to see whether or not this venture is going to be successful. I can bet that every one of you sitting here today, directly or indirectly, has been affected by the information that has been available from the census. And the loss of that information is going to have a negative effect on all of us. That's the value of a census. What about the replacement of the census with a national household survey? 
you see a picture in front of you. I think that quite accurately captures the reality of a voluntary survey. The driver in this picture, anybody, can be the government, it can be a professor in a university, it can be you and me. We are driving our car on the freeway with a blindfold on our eyes. The eyes, they are the senses. And the blindfold is the new national household survey. And the passenger, it's all of us. Think about what is going to happen to these people driving on a freeway with a blindfold on. And the consequences for all of us in the absence of a census, in the kinds of things for governments or anybody else would make a decision, the kinds of consequences that we face are not going to be any different from what you see in this picture. So I repeat, the importance of the census is so high that in the absence of the information we collect, the whole statistical system can come crumbling down. So National Household Survey, I just mentioned as a replacement for the census. Some examples of uh, how bad it actually is. Think of it the following way. If you have a census and 25% or more of the population do not respond to the questions in the census, Statistics Canada would not make that information available because the quality of the data would not be good enough. So 25% or above non-response to questions, no data. What is the non-response in the National Household Survey? For Canada, 26.1%. For Ontario, 27%. What it means is that the quality of these data is so bad that if you had applied the census standards for making it public, on average, none of the information in the National Household Survey would have seen the light of day. So what happened? Well, what Statistics Canada ended up doing was to say, well, for this one survey, we would publish information even if the non-response rate is above 25%. We would jack up this cutoff from 25 to 50%. So we have data available from the National Household Survey with these lower standards. But even with these lower standards, you find that 25% of the communities across Canada, there is no information released by Statistics Canada because the quality of this information is really bad. In Saskatchewan, 40% of the communities, there is no data available from the National Household Survey because the quality of the information is truly bad. Here's a chart that I want to show you. There are, by the way, some pieces of information that are available both from the short form census and from the National Household Survey. If we believe, which I think is a right belief, that, this, that the information coming out of the short form census is quite accurate, then you compare this information from the National Household Survey to the information from the census, and you'll get a picture of how good or bad this information is. So what I've done in this chart is to divide the size of the population from the National Household Survey by the census information. And if the two were the same, the ratio would be one. Anytime you see a dot which is not one, it gives you some indication of the quality of the data in the National Household Survey. And as you can see, these dots are all over the map, as they say, which is an indication that the quality of the data from this survey is really quite bad. Here's a second chart which tries to provide you with the same information. In this case, in contrast to the previous chart which focused on population, this chart is focusing on dwellings and one type of dwelling, and that is the number of apartment buildings, or the number of apartments. Again, the technique is the same. How many apartments are there according to the National Household Survey in the city of, in the city of Toronto, the central metropolitan area of Toronto? And what you see at the bottom is the census tracts in the CMA of Toronto. Again, anything which deviates 
from number one is an indication of how bad the data are from the National Household Survey. And you can see it is pretty bad. In fact, for some of the census tracts, the, the degree of error can be as high as 300% on one side and 50% on the other. So the size of the number of apartments in the survey is either half of what is in the census, or it can be three times. So what is the conclusion that I draw from an analysis of the data from the National Household Survey? The conclusion I have is that most data in the National Household Survey is invalid as a replacement for the census. I'm sure all of you make all kinds of decisions in your life to buy certain things or not to buy certain things. I would want to know if there is someone in this crowd here today who would want to go and buy something which he or she knows is lower quality and is available at a higher price. Can you do that? I can't imagine that anyone here would do that. Now, who is it that can do such a thing? Well, that is called the government of Canada. <laughs> the government of Canada spent an extra $22 million to conduct this survey compared to the long form census. And what did they get out of that is data, which to me is really not a valid piece of information. So what is next? Statistics Canada has put out a paper on their website which has analyzed options as to what to do in 2016. They looked at the National Household Survey. They looked at uh, the long-form census. They looked at the European model of doing census, and they looked at the American model of doing census. Their conclusion that you can find on their website, the traditional census approach is the only viable methodology for the 2006 census program. I wrote an article in a book a couple of years ago where I made a statement that some people thought was somewhat important, and I'm going to repeat that here. The statement I made was that in the League of Nations, a country cannot be called civilized if you do not have good public policies. And good public policies cannot always be made without good data. So there are two things that you may want to remember from what I said today. One, without a census, the whole system of official statistics would start to crumble down. And second, you need good data for good public policy. And finally, I would say the same that the PM has said. Vital statistics are critical, and you can't manage what you cannot measure. Thank you very much.